Hey, what is going on you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape and welcome to a brand new video for you all today. One of my biggest projects yet and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Loot from 1,000 players. Starting at 2,300 kills overall and ending the video at 3,300 kills overall. All of this was being tracked at the top left of every single world that I was in when I was PKing so it was really easy to keep track of my progress. And as it goes for the gear and the supplies for the making of the this video I did invest just about 700 mil in all of the gear that I use the weapons the food the runes all the potions and that is what you're seeing on screen now and I wanted to use a set of gear that was actually inspired by one of my favorite PKing videos of all time which you can find in the description below as well as some other goodies that I did throw in there for you all and that gear basically being a welfare setup of full rune and that was anytime I was using melee anytime I would use range I would use red dehyde instead of black and anytime time I was using magic I would be using split bark instead of mystic now don't worry this was not done for the whole entire video just more so the first half of the video I would say and this gear was also used because most of the time when I killed someone in the wild if they were a PK -er or even a PVM -er, they would be using black dehyde they would be using mystic and if I was using the same gear that I was basically PKing then it would be really hard to kind of keep track of the loot that we got throughout the video especially since I did die just about 200 times and you will see that in a separate video most likely tomorrow or the next day and you might also notice that I did decide to change my username for this video and I do that for certain videos especially ones that involve me in the wilderness anytime you are a youtuber or a live streamer you know you kind of have more of a target on your head and I definitely didn't want to have that problem especially when you have to PK a thousand people now the first name change I did name myself after one of my favorite PKers uh, in 2008 a guy named Buok I'm PB I'm not too sure if he's still around to this day but yeah I did name myself Buok I'm NS made the NS stand for no sleep you know how to throw in a little uh, signature there and it did work out pretty well I think I only got recognized like a total of three times in about one month so not too bad at all and judging by just these beginning clips here you can kind of tell that nobody was off limits for this video I mean for the most part you know my number one rule was if I saw them before most of the time I wasn't going to attack them again and this really became a bigger part of the video later on you know I would be in certain PVM locations and I would see the same people throughout the same weeks uh, as the time would go by and eventually I did stop attacking certain people certain PVMers who I knew uh, wouldn't be risking much and if I ever saw an Iron Man in welfare gear like monk robes or anything like that most of the time I didn't attack them but sometimes I did like I said nobody is off limits you know you gotta take that into account when you go into the wilderness uh, we didn't encounter a single hardcore Iron Man if you're curious about that however we did actually find one single ultimate Iron Man at Lava Dragons and this was about halfway point of the video and I'm not too sure what he was doing there but when I PK'd him I remember I got a lot of elemental runes and about 100k cash so yeah not too sure what was going on there but that was the one encounter that I had with an ultimate Iron Man now for the first 200 or 300 kills I would say uh, most of the time I was in bounty hunter and I was doing a lot of target hunting and occasionally I would switch over to PvP worlds but I would never really PK in the normal popular PvP locations like the Grand Exchange or Edgeville these PvP kills were mainly happening at Reb Caves as well as uh, PVM hotspots around the wilderness. So yeah, it just so happens that sometimes people choose PvP worlds to do some PVMing in. And for the most part, there really aren't too many PKers who check out spots uh, in the wilderness that's in PvP worlds. So it maybe is uh, something to consider if you ever want to go PVMing. That is, of course, unless I'm in the wilderness. But if it's just me, then I'm sure you'll be all right. Now, something that I wasn't expecting the old school team to implement was actually to make it so that in PvP worlds and BH worlds, you now have your your own separate kill count counter that is different from normal world so anytime I was in the wild um, about one week after I started the creation of this video this update did happen and my KC essentially reset in PvP and BH worlds to zero now there wasn't really a problem because all of it was being added on to the same KC from start to finish anyway however it's just going to look different uh, in a few minutes here when we do get to that part you will see that that update did happen and if anything it just made it a little bit harder to track but uh, it is cleaner now and I'm glad that they did go through with that I think it was uh, much needed and one last update to touch on that tremendously helped me out uh, throughout this video is that they did actually buff the entangle spell so originally when your opponent was praying magic and you would throw an entangle at them it would be a very short cast and they could run away essentially after like two hits well now even if your opponent is praying magic it is a full freeze I believe it's 15 seconds and every second counts and since I'm a bigger fan of normal spellbook PKing over using ancient 
ancients which you will see a ton of normal spellbook pking in this video that entangle update helped me tremendously and there was also a small nerf to the bulwark which made it so that it really has no magic defense uh which means that it's much easier to catch freezes so yeah i mean combine that with the entangle buff i mean it made it really good for uh normal spellbook pking and especially as a main account you don't see too many people on normal spellbooks um i'm sure a lot of people are going to judge me in the comment section below for using one thing that you don't really see too often as a max main and that is pking with god spells none other than zamorak flames with a staff of the dead combination occasionally i would bring an occult necklace but uh you know to my defense at this current point in time i did not know how strong toma fire with fire surge pking was for magic i had no idea and you can imagine the look on my face when i switched to that spell after using flames of zamorak for probably two weeks straight i think i went from hitting 10s through prayer to 28s through prayer and a max hit of 33 to 47 so yeah it was absolutely incredible um i had a lot of fun with that and yeah you know you can kind of tell in the beginning part of the video i was just rocking that welfare setup you know the rune with the red dehyde and i pretty much became infamous for it i mean if i would get a target i would say 80 percent of the time if they were in deep wilderness they would instantly skip me and that may be because you know after a while you know you kind of see the same names around and people kind of know what you're doing you know most of the time it was just getting lucky with that armadil god sword spec uh or the dragon claws of course and occasionally i would switch weapons uh you know i would bring an elder maul to g maul combination sometimes definitely one of my favorite combinations in the game but unfortunately that does remind me that there was another pvp update where they did alter the special attack of the granite maul now you can't double spec with it unless you want to pay a high price to have the ability to do so and i decided against that so once that update did come out uh, i pretty much stopped using the granite maul for the rest of the video that's really not a big deal for me though there's plenty of other weapons to choose from and also there would be times like this where you know sometimes all i would need was my trusted magic short bow and it would get the job done so yeah never discredit uh, certain weapons and of course one downside to using the red dehyde and the rune and split bark was obviously we didn't have the greatest defense bonus and we weren't hitting as high as we possibly could have been had we been using better gear that had better bonuses uh we probably would have gotten a lot more kills uh, a lot sooner than we did but at the end of the day you know that gear was kind of what made me the underdog in a lot of these fights and a lot of these kills were just based on the simple fact that i had a good special attack weapon and of course that i was always bringing barrows gloves i mean i know the rune gloves would have kind of matched the fashion scape there but barrows gloves are just such tremendous strength bonus it is no joke that is why they're always going to be expensive when you lose them they're so worth it and uh, really did come into play with the high armadillo god sword specs as well as the consistently high dragon claw specs now coming into this video i did actually have a start of 67 million bounty hunter points which i did buy from the clan chat bh and chill probably close to two years ago never did get around to spending all of them but i will say this video did help with that problem i'm not too sure how many i lost i do think it's somewhere close to 30 million now these points do come in hand for things like buying looting bags and also buying rune pouches. Uh, the rune pouches are great for deep wild PKing and the looting bag is pretty much great for anything. It's kind of like a 2019 familiar, you know, it's like a pack yak only it just has a certain amount of spaces that it can fill stuff with. And I'm sure a lot of people are probably wondering why in the world I was doing all this target hunting and all this world 18 PKing and never bringing a single emblem with me. And the answer to that is kind of disappointing but it is the blunt truth and that is the fact that I just died so much during this video that I just thought that there would be no way that I could reach a tier 10 from a tier 1 from killing like 10 people in a row. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think there was a single time during this video where I killed 10 PKers in a row. I mean, there's definitely times where I've killed 10 PVMers in a row, but I just for some reason thought the whole uh, mysterious emblem thing was kind of a bad idea, especially because the price of them is so low. As you guys may have seen from Sir Pugger's videos, there's just so many emblem farming bots around the wilderness, and they're just so devalued right now that as a max main I really just couldn't bother bringing them so yeah I wouldn't uh, always say that that's for everyone definitely kind of think about it before you go PKing because you could make some potential uh, extra cash on the side if you can continue to kill your target back to back to back and eventually upgrade and sell that emblem now something that I was keeping track of in a really accurate way was of course all of the drops that we did get from these PKers and of course these PVMers and something that not a lot of people would realize is that I do actually pick up every single thing that is on the ground including all of the potions including pretty much all of the food until my looting bag was full and then I decided to bank it I never took any risks I mean there was uh, multiple times where I would get uh, more than one kill
skill per inventory, sometimes just getting lucky with some hits. But for the most part, I would always try my very best to make an escape and make sure that I can bank all of the drops that I did get because that is the point of this video. Although I love the PKing content, the main point is to see just how big of a drop tab we can get from killing 1,000 people. And uh, I wanted as much diversity as possible in these drops. I wanted to see some of the weirdest things and you will see at the very end, this loot tab is just something else, man. I mean, some of the items that I got from some people in the wild, it's just there was times where I would actually cry laughing at some people that I would find. It would be almost as funny as taking down a max mage from 99 HP with two hits just like that, wearing nothing more than red dehyde, a rune plate skirt, and of course a gas mask. Not too sure what inspired the mask, but uh, whatever it was, it did get me that 14 mil PK, which believe it or not, was not the most expensive PK of the video. That is yet to come. That is probably one of the most uh, weirdest ways I've ever gotten a big PK in my life, and I'm really looking forward to showing you guys the clip here in probably 20 minutes or so. I don't know, it's a pretty long video, you know? Definitely a lot to go through, uh, but I do have one clip here that kind of signifies why they nerfed the G Mall, and you can kind of see right there as to why they did. You know, when you look at that clip, you can kind of understand how a weapon that's worth 30k shouldn't be capable of something so intense, but I will remember those moments, and uh, I will definitely savor them, so yeah. But I will say one other thing that I was always bringing with me, you know, in the inventory alongside that looting bag, alongside all the potions and the food, was of course vengeance. You know, the deaths, the astrals, and the dust runes always came in handy for that extra damage, and uh, every damage point matters when it comes to PKing, especially in this type of gear, and I really do recommend it. I mean, you can kind of tell just in that fight, you know, three versus one there, uh, using vengeance and just kind of keeping my HP high, you can pull off some pretty awesome things. So, you know, even when the numbers are not in your favor, never give up. You never know what you can pull off with just a little bit of luck. And for the most part in this video, I would say about half of it was all done solo and the other half, I always had a teammate by my side. I had a teammate that really didn't know what he was doing, but he wanted to be involved in the video. So I pretty much told him anytime that I go to multi and anytime that I try to kill PVMers or anyone that I just see in deep wilderness, I mean, there can be a lot of people in the wilderness for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes they're doing clue scrolls. Sometimes they're doing the mage arena two cape. Sometimes they're just charging glories and sometimes they're just doing nothing. There would be all sorts of people to kill and I realized that, you know, there would always be that problem of them getting away and eventually teleporting. So I needed to find someone that would be my full-time freezer, you know, someone who could just auto cast ice splits and I would be the TB'er and also bring in Tangle. So for all of the multi clips, every single one of them almost was done with a good friend of mine and he was my ice blitzer. That's all he did. He never even brought any switches. He would just bring occasionally a dragon spear and just food and potions and you know what it actually got the job done so big shout out to him he was a huge help and there would also be times uh, where I would actually use a secondary main of mine that is 122 combat and I would use this account as a scout pretty much 24 uh, 7 when I would be in multi and I would have it logged in at areas around the game such as uh, chaos Ellie such as south of Vedion. having this scout account saved me so much time even though that there is no limit when you want to hop multiple worlds in this game anymore that was a huge help to me of course but having a second account that can stand by and kind of see things that you can't really does help and I found probably close to at least 250 people all because of that scout account and since it was 122 combat it did occasionally bring ice blitz as well and like moon clan some welfare related armor and there would be times where I would be using two accounts to PK and I really didn't keep up with that well at all but it was at least worth trying out so yeah having a scout account available no matter the combat uh, definitely very useful and I highly suggest it. Now I also have to give credit to my rune crossbow and my dragon bolts E. They were getting me some incredible kills throughout the video. And I think the main reason for that is because just a lot of people for some odd reason don't sip anti-fires when they're in the wilderness. And because of that, you know, you leave the very cheap dragon bolt E that's not worth much at all. You kind of leave that with the potential to hit over a 60 on you. So I would say that makes the rune crossbow a little underrated and you know, it is pretty old school. So I like that about it as well. I'm a fan of the ballista. Don't get me wrong, but I ended up using it a few times during this video and pretty much every time I would use it uh, it would be after I would be Dragon Claw rushing someone at the Rev Caves or somewhere else and at times I would try to get a little creative and teleport up to my bounty hunter target and instantly just Dragon Claw spec them whether they were in multi or not. Most of the time I assume no one would ever expect this because I myself never got a target to teleport up to me in all of these 1000 kills while I was at bounty hunter and I think that's because most of my levels don't really go to bounty hunter and that just makes the idea of rushing people even better because they never seem to expect it. But it did backfire a few times. 
you know, as anything would, and uh, sometimes I would teleport up to multi and die instantly by a clan. Uh, sometimes I would get smited because I wasn't paying attention, and whenever I did teleport up to multi, I pretty much knew it was a 50-50 shot on, like, a suicide mission because if you do teleport up to Anacaro, there is no escape. I mean, it's like being in Scorpia just trapped in the middle. It's just so hard to escape, but I will say something that you can get away with is logging out right as you teleport up to your target. Like, if you want to just try out the water, see if your target is just like a one or two man team just sitting in the middle of nowhere and you teleport up and then oh there's like 50 people well you can instantly log I'm sure you would be faster than the person standing there like I said they're not expecting it but you are so and this clip here is a prime example of what I'm talking about I went claw rushing and I actually misclicked the guy that I was trying to go for my target and uh, his team accidentally clicked him and we still got the kill luckily but uh, that's just one example uh, that was actually at the chaos altar which I did a few kills at but uh, I don't even think I put any in this video because I didn't really get anything from them. They were just kind of welfare. Kind of sad to see that there wasn't uh, many level 120s at the Chaos Altar. I was uh, seeing more of the higher levels towards Callisto and especially Chaos, Ellie, uh, Scorpia, especially, you know, deeper wild things I would tend to see the higher levels at. Now, as I mentioned before, the element of surprise is very important, especially when Dragon Claw rushing and something that took me by surprise was teleporting up to level 30 and seeing this team. It looked like three max mages and I didn't hesitate I instantly just went for the D claw rush and then into the rune crossbow I actually pulled off this kill somehow and I did get about four mil from this PK and he also unfortunately lost his pet so of course the next thing I did was make this team's day go from bad to even worse and I did get the next team member as my target teleported directly up to him and unfortunately another Dagoneth King pet was lost in the wilderness so yeah we did get a solid two mil PK from this guy I think he banked the Arums because we only got an occult from him. Yeah, that just goes to show people never expect that Dragon Claw spec, especially that deep in the wilderness, and uh, I'm really not too sure what those guys were doing, but God bless them. I tell you what, whether you know what you're doing or whether you are clueless, as long as you're in this wilderness, you are helping keep it alive, and that is a big, important factor, and hopefully this video kind of helps people know that even a guy like me, you know, I'm not the best PK around, I wouldn't even consider me top 100,000, but I will say, no matter what happens, unless of course I get smited for a plus one, I'm always having a great time, and uh, you know, that's what it's all about. So yeah, much love to those guys. Now one thing that I have not touched on yet is that a lot of these PVMing clips were all done in total level worlds. Now something that you won't see in this video at all is the Revenant Caves in total level worlds. These worlds being the 2k total worlds and the 2200 total worlds. Those are all clan run, and most of those guys are pretty much just always ready to anti-PK or they always have a TB already so you got to be really cautious if you're going to PK there however in pretty much every other location in the wilderness in these total level worlds you can always find great high risking PVMers that are rarely expecting you to come and try to kill them and now I have personally seen a lot of videos related to PKing in the total level worlds and while I never see people risk incredible amounts that I have seen before I did actually manage to get a few people during this video for a couple mil uh, just in loot from you know what they were killing for example Callisto and Vedion and Venonatus. Something about being on a total level world I guess just makes them bank less often so yeah usually when you get the kills you do get more drops but I will say I did harass these PVMers for the past month I mean, it was like every morning from 9 to 5 I would just be constantly hopping the total level worlds at Vedion and as soon as I logged in I would throw the TB and I'd say probably 80% of the time I would always TB them and usually when I was using Flames of Zamrock and of course I would always have my full-time ice blitzer with me. I would say people would get away probably 50% of the time just because there are so many ways you can escape from PKers uh, no matter where you are, even at Callisto, even at Venonatus, and I might touch on those later on in the video. But DPS definitely plays a huge role, and when I was using those Flames of Zamrock spells all the time, I really wasn't ever hitting, and when I switched to Fire Surge later on, I was definitely seeing the difference, and I really do wish that I was using uh, Fire Surge throughout the whole video, just when I was on normal spellbooks, of course. Occasionally, though, I would switch it up and go on Ancient Spellbooks and use Ice Barrage and, uh, you know, not really worry so much about TB because I'd be in a deep wilderness uh, such as Callisto or Chaos Ellie. And in this next clip here, you're going to be seeing me freezing someone and instantly just trying to kill them because I had just logged in. He was running towards the obelisk, and little did I know the reason he was running towards that obelisk was that he had the Chaos Ellie pet. He had achieved it. He had it in his inventory for some reason. Yeah, that's not my proudest moment. Probably not his proudest 
this moment either, but I will say you never know what's gonna happen, you never know what you're gonna get, and I did actually see that guy uh, for about two days after that happened. He was back at Chaos Ellie, and unfortunately I did kill him again, but I didn't really realize it was him until it was too late, but then I did see him later and I offed him, so I hope that he got the Chaos Ellie pet back by now. The drop rate's really not too bad, so I'm sure he made off with it, and whenever I do my 1000 Chaos Elemental video in the near future, I will dedicate it to him, so there you go. Maybe I'll go dry of the pet and that'll be my payback for doing that. You never know, karma. But yeah, it is important to note that I did get some pretty awesome PKs over at Chaos Ellie. One of them was this loot here, the Black Mask and the full Verox. I guess for some reason people just think that no one PKs at Chaos Ellie, and to be fair, they're not entirely wrong. Uh, while I was PKing at Chaos Ellie, and specifically Scorpia, I virtually never saw any other PKers or any other teams. Maybe there was two instances out of like a hundred that I did run into a team and I actually died there, but that was pretty much it. You know, I think those teams are kind of teams that just kind of go from place to place kind of like what I do uh, starting the day at one location like at Lava Dragons and going south over onto Vedion, east to Venonatus, and then north to Callisto. Doing this as a routine every day, you know, I would cover all these places, kind of spend like 30 minutes to an hour in each of these places, hopping every single world. And because of this lovely update where there's virtually no limit on hopping as many worlds as you want to, and especially me using two accounts instead of one, I was able to see so much more so much faster than ever before. So I'm really actually glad that I waited to do this video just for that one update and I know that I've talked about so many different PvP updates in this video already but that one update the world hop limit being removed is something that I think actually made this video worth doing and bearable uh, had it not been for that I would have spent hours upon hours I'm not even joking you of just hopping worlds and that would have been miserable so I'm very thankful that uh, since I use the normal client you know I didn't have quick hop or anything like that um, on any other client I'm just glad that it was implemented into the game for this video. Now one thing that I did notice about most of these locations, most of these PVM bosses, is that it always came with something else. And what I mean by that is if I was at Callisto, I would have to check three different spots for people who were safe spotting. Or if I was at Vedion, I believe there's like five to six different safe spots there. With Venonatus, there's three. Uh, if you're at Chaos Elemental, there's multiple. And all of that walking, all of that hopping, you know, using uh, multiple accounts as well, did take up most of the time that this video took. You know, actually killing people, actually PK them doesn't really take that long. I mean, I had a few instances, maybe under 10 instances where it was like a five minute fight and they just literally ran from 40 wilderness down to level one. And it was actually pretty funny after a few minutes goes by and then the TB runs out and you think you have them, but then they just telly and then they laugh in your face. But yeah, as I said before, a lot of the time making this video over the past month uh, was just spent finding people. Uh, a lot of these PVMers, as you're seeing uh, a lot more towards this part of the video than you did in the beginning part of the video, just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and the same goes for everyone who was doing clue scrolls and especially all of the people that I did manage to kill who were trying to go for the Mage Arena 2 cape. I do believe the number of that is probably close to 30 or 40 and uh, that's pretty high. I didn't expect so many people to be doing that uh, while I was just trying to kill PVMers but that was something that did stand out to me uh, and make sure that if you're ever going to be doing that to bring a lot of brews, you know, phoenix necklaces because you're always going to be in multi and anything can happen in multi. One one thing that I actually was doing to someone who I was trying to kill at Chaos Elemental was because I have all of the Wilderness Diaries complete, I can pretty much control where an obelisk teleports me to. So anytime someone was trying to escape from Chaos Ellie and they ran east instead of inside the castle upstairs, which is the number one escape route for that, uh, you know, situation. Well, anytime they would try to use the obelisk, either me or my friend who also had the diaries done would just keep redirecting the obelisk to stay in level 50 Wilderness, and essentially they would be screwed. I even had one guy tell me that he was going to uh, report me for glitching the portal. You know, report me for doing the diaries, I guess. Now, in this next clip coming up, I was risking an AGS as well as a toxic staff of the dead at the same time, so I decided that as I was going to die, I was going to drop the AGS on the ground so that my friend could pick it up. And luckily, by some miracle, this actually worked, and uh, he was using a touchpad on a laptop, and I pretty much just yelled over the phone, because when we would PK, uh, we pretty much went old school with that as well. Uh, we weren't using Discord or TeamSpeak or Skype, I was just calling him on my phone. I just had my Apple earbuds in, and we pretty much just talked and communicated that way. And communication is definitely important uh, while PKing, and luckily for me, everyone that I did PK with was pretty good at it. So yeah, overall, great experience with the teams that I was 
was with uh, was only with a few, but um, each of them was great for different reasons. So props to them. And I did promise you guys earlier that I would show you some dark bow rushing, and there you go, my one and only clip, pretty much of dark bowing. Uh, it was really hard to kill people, surprisingly, with a dark bow. I thought it would be easier, you know, especially at Venonatus, you know, when people are praying magic and keeping their HP low. But I guess not. So luckily, though, I did have better luck at other wilderness bosses, and what I'm about to show you guys is the biggest PK of this video. This guy unfortunately decided to skull on me while he was killing Scorpio with his two friends, and not only did we get an imbued heart, but we also got a tormented bracelet and an occult necklace for a total amount of 33 mil. Absolutely insane. What originally happened was I walked inside the cave, there was three high level PVMers in the 1750 total world, and it was just me inside the cave, and I was looking pretty newbie. I think it was on normal spell books, and uh, pretty much two of them just straight up froze me and they instantly ran out and luckily I had my blitzer there and he did catch a freeze and uh, we just prioritized the one with the saying staff that raids two staff which is uh, about 77 mil at this point and we did actually pull off the kill and he did lose over 30 mil in other items and I had no idea that he was risking that much. Uh, I know that he was scold and I knew that I was going to get an occult and a few nice things but I had no idea that people bring imbued hearts there. Uh, it's just crazy. So yeah that was one of the big biggest PKs uh, of the video and what you're about to see is number two while I was at Callisto I did start attacking two PVMers and um, luckily one of them scold up before I hit him so he was scold with full Verox and I thought to myself well let me just try my very best to kill him and we did and to my surprise a lovely Armadil God Sword was laying on the ground and I was flipping out because I've only PK'd an AGS like twice in my life on this game um, you know post 2007 and yeah yeah, I mean, it's a great feeling, so I was really happy to get that. It's only like 13 mil. I don't know what happened to that, but uh, definitely nice to get our second biggest PK of the video. And like I said before, you know, we did get some nice PKs that were adding up over time from all of these PVMers. You know, one thing that I wanted to make sure to do was not kill anyone who wasn't wearing anything or who looked like they just didn't have anything. I touched on this earlier, but I wanted to make sure that I made money during this video, that I got as many drops as I could. That would just add nothing but value and creativity and variety to that drop tab overall. In this clip here, I did actually kill someone who was at Callisto safe spotting in a 2200 world, and I did get a Berserker ring because I think I actually smited him. So uh, whatever he was protecting, we did get. And yeah, the price of Berserker rings right now are pretty nice, so it was nice to get that. We also did manage to PK an Archer's ring and just a couple uh, Seer's rings throughout this video. I myself never really PK'd with any rings in particular other than Seer's, which isn't really that expensive, just a few hundred K. And I did imbue it numerous times uh, and lost it a total of three times. That's like three times the 650,000 Nightmare Zone points, so I gotta get those back. Yeah, those rings really do help uh, in the wilderness, especially with uh, strength bonus, especially with mage bonus, range bonus, whatever you want to bring them for. And here's another Black Mask PK, our second one that we did get at Chaos Elemental. Really nice there. Uh, I was also checking out High Risk Worlds 365, even though I was bringing plus ones. Certainly don't want to rule out any world when you're looking for just PVMers instead of PKers. And as you just saw in that clip, that was the only PK that I did get from a guy who is charging glories. So yeah, I didn't see uh, too many of them like in range of me able to, you know, freeze them and kill them. However, I saw a ton of them log out on me as soon as they saw me on the mini map. They were just gone in a split second. I'm really not too sure if those people are Iron Man, if those people are normal accounts just trying to earn money. I do know that charging glories used to be one of the most profitable things on an hourly rate that you could do in the game. Game. I did spend a few hours at the Fountain of Rune and I did hop around and I did keep a scout there for uh, about half a day and there was no action there. I couldn't seem to find anybody and it would always be those situations where I was killing someone who was close by to the Rune Altar and then of course I would see someone who was charging glories run by and then they would log out. So it was all just bad timing on my part I guess. And speaking of timing, we are at the time where I finally did make the decision to switch to Fire Surge with the Tome of Fire instead of Flames of Zamorak. And man, once you guys just see a compilation of seeing fire surge in action you will completely understand why I just stuck with it for the rest of the video as it goes for uh, my magic switch you know any spell that can hit a 28 through prayer which in my opinion is like basically using an AGS just to whack your opponent as they're praying melee it's just such a high hit and it just does such extraordinary amounts of damage that one of the benefits of using fire surge on people who I was killing at Vedion or pretty much anywhere is they would instantly pray magic almost every single time 
And when I was using things like Ice Barrage and things like Flames of Zamorak, more than likely they would always just kind of camp prey melee because they knew that Mage wasn't a huge threat. But the second that you put on a staff and you put on a book that enables you to hit 46s and just crazy high hits with Fire Surge, that's the second that they start switching that prayer. And that enables me to get my Dragon Claw spec in right away. As you can see in most of these clips, that is pretty much what I was always risking was the Toxic Staff of the Dead because I felt like I almost had to bring Dragon Claws with this combination. And one thing that always seemed to work as I was casting my spells I would pretend that I would be sipping on a potion and while I would click on that sip of the potion I would put my dragon claws on in the same tick inspect them and they would never see it coming I tell you it probably worked 99% of the time the only times that it did not work was uh, usually just when I would misclick or lag or something like that so yeah it was a really good method and it was working out pretty well I will say the only downside to that uh, way of PKing is that every death really counted then because now we're at the part of the video where I really kind of said screw that welfare gear let me just start risking a little bit more so that's pretty much what I did you know I put on the black mystic I put on the gold mystic the blue mystic and I put on that toxic staff of the dead I always had to bring you know the seer's ring the tome of fire uh, sometimes I'd bring a fury because the amulet of fury is pretty much good for range magic and melee so it's kind of like three in one and yeah I mean I really had to get to work and I was really seeing the difference in hits uh, the difference in accuracy the difference in kills per hour and yeah you know it is true the more you risk and the more you spend, more than likely, the more kills you're gonna get. That's a lot of mores in one sentence, but you know what I mean. And of course, I wouldn't always use the Dragon Claws and the Toxic Staff. Um, occasionally, I would switch it up to the Armadillo God Sword, and I got some pretty awesome KOs and some pretty awesome kills in general with that. Uh, just really always been a big fan of the Armadillo God Sword spec. I think it's like truly one of the most underrated weapons in the game now, just for the, you know, simple fact of how cheap it is. And it's just so good for PKing. It's always been the same. It's never changed, you know, since it came out. It's always just been a great high hitting weapon and it made this video uh, much easier and definitely a lot more entertaining for me to do. Uh, so yeah, much love to the Armado God Sword. Not as fun as Dragon Claws, but it gets the job done. And I would like to think that for this video for killing and PKing 1000 players total that I did pretty much get all of my fulfillment from all of the different weapons that I did choose to use uh, throughout this video. I tried to use as many as I could. I tried to do as many different things as I could. Uh, I pretty much changed locations all the time. You kind of saw a lot of the same thing, but at the same time, at least you saw a lot. And that was kind of the goal with this video. It was going to be my longest journey yet, uh, my longest video itself yet, not just lengthwise, but also time invested. And it really was. I pretty much started this video, as it says in the beginning, August 15th, and now it is September 18th. And yeah, I didn't upload a single video in that time. And I just, I don't know, I felt empty, you know? I mean, I know it's not that uncommon for me to go a few weeks every now and again without a video, but a whole month, I mean, that's that's definitely saying something and uh, I want you guys to know that it was well worth it every single second every single minute every single day and hour that I did put into this video I have no regrets and of course we have to get the last 1,000th kill at the Revenant Caves and that is exactly what we did ladies and gentlemen loot from 1,000 players has been complete after over one month of PKing almost every single day god it was just incredible but uh, what an incredible experience uh, these next few clips here before we get into the insane loot tab the incredible price check that is yet to come I was really just doing the math you know kind of showing on screen and uh, talking on screen you know explaining uh, all the kills and how we ended up getting to 3,300 overall uh, whether it was in a PvP world a bounty hunter world or simply any of the many normal worlds it was all done and uh, it was done the right way I think I prioritized the right type of people you know uh, PKers and PVMers alike I uh, didn't really focus on too many people who weren't risking anything I wanted to make sure that the this loot tab was everything that you guys wanted it to be so with that being said and with all of the 1,000 kills being shown 840 in normal world 60 in PvP and of course 100 in bounty hunter let's go ahead and see the drops so I did warn you this is a pretty big tab and it will take some time to go over so first things first we have all of the Barrows armor and pretty much all of the amulets and their rings and some of the dragon items as well that we did PK so we have uh, just about 39 Varrock flails a couple sets of Verox, Torags, Carols, Arams, and DH. Uh, we have one Fury that we did PK. Five Oak Colts, those were all mainly at Scorpia. Uh, blessed Spirit Shields and Normal Spirit Shields, as well as all these rings and 154 uh, Nezi Helms. Um, just a lot of Dragon items and uh, a couple Leaf Bladed Battle Axes as well, just about 10 of those. As you guys saw earlier on in the video, there are those two Black Masks that we did PK, as well as that Scepter and a couple Tridents. Overall, for the Mystic, we have 
have over 20 sets of black mystic. Uh, must be the most popular set of mystic to PK in. A couple sets of gold and a couple sets of white. Nothing too crazy there. Also a couple sets of enchanted. You can't forget that. And even some split bark boots. Glad I'm not the only one who PKs with split bark. So yeah, moving down, we now have the range tab, or I guess the range side of the tab, I should say. We went from uh, pretty much melee to magic to now range. There are the uh, two dragon crossbows that I did PK, as well as seven ballistas and one dark bow, as well as PKing over 448 black dehyde bodies and 436 black dehyde chaps, uh, as well as a couple dehyde sets that were, uh, you know, god related, a couple bandos items here and there, some granite, as well as some more rune items and of course we can't forget the odium shards and malediction shards that we did get from people at scorpia three odiums and one malediction and of course one tome of fire but yeah those were kind of like the unique rares that i did uh pick up along the way did not expect to get any of those um but yeah it was much appreciated did help the price check and yeah scrolling down we just have all the jewelry all the glories the games necklaces the burning amulets ring of duelings amulet of strength pretty much everything that you can imagine you know if it was on the ground i definitely picked it up and uh, yeah, you know, just looking further down the tab, we have all of the supplies and the resources that you do get as drops from everywhere uh, around the wilderness where we were PKing at. All the monsters, uh, which really did help the price check because every single PVMer that we did kill, they all had most of the time over 300 to 500k of a risk. And uh, it really did pay off. So yeah, including all of the people that we killed at Revs, we had an incredible amount of ether as well as bracelets. And of course, as it goes for the very expensive plus one items that I wanted to showcase for pretty much uh, wrapping up the highlights of the video. Of course, we did PK that Imbued Heart, that Tormented Bracelet, and the Armadil God Swords. So those were the three most expensive items that were PK'd during this video, and go figure, they were all from PVMers instead of from PKers. So that was just luck on my part. I'm really glad that we did get those uh, kills. And with all that being said, I think it is time to finally start the price check. We are going to price check every single item in this humongous tab, so let's go ahead and get the calculator out and let's go ahead and start. So overall, the very first price check comes out to be 46.7 mil. Now, if you're curious as to where that 92.7 came from, all of those rare items that I mentioned before, the Armadil, God Sword, Imbued Heart, and as well as the Tormented Bracelet, they were already added into the price check. That was the first number that I did. Now we move on to the third. So we add those two numbers up with a third price check of 29.1 mil. And now we move on to the fourth price check. So many different inventories to come out here. This inventory here is pretty much all of the magic related stuff as well as the black masks so we have all of the mystics and all of the staves and all of these items do come out to be just about another 12.5 mil so we'll go ahead and we add that on to the price check and now we are already over 130 mil strong okay and moving on to the next price check here is some more robes and some more range related things uh, this one coming out to be just about 14.2 mil so now we are nearing the 150 mil mark uh, for this next price check we pretty much have all the ammunition that we did pk as well as the sets of black dehyde pretty much only money here would be the black dehyde just so many random uh amount, amounts of bolts and arrows that i saw people using if you are ever going to be using uh normal dragon bolts or normal diamond bolts in the wilderness what are you doing? That's all I gotta say. Gotta make sure they're enchanted. But yeah, with that price check, we are close to 160 mil and moving on to the very next price check, adding on an additional 6 mil to that or 5.9, close enough to now 164 mil. And the next price check, we are going to be showing pretty much the Tome of Fire, the Shards, all of the Initiate, all of the Proselyte that we did PK. And this tab coming out to be just about 10 mil. So now we are at 174.2 mil. But wait, there's more. So now we we are going to price check all of the blessings, all of the god items, the miters, the robes, the cloaks, and uh, the purple sweets as well. And that does add on another 3.6 mil to the price check. Like I said, every item counts. Next, we move on to all the jewelry, the ring of wealth, the combat bracelets, all of the glories, the game necklaces, and the dueling rings. Truly a large amount of jewelry. I should open a shop or something. 9 mil from that one, so we add that to the price check, and now we are at 186 mil. Now we scroll down a little bit 
bit and we get to, you know, what is a little bit of the PVM drops, uh, some planks, some logs, some limper roots, some supplies that do add up over time. And we do get about 4.4 mil from that. Now I think there's only one price check. Oh no, sorry. There's another one after this, but yeah, we're getting close to the very end here. I promise this is the uh, second to last price check. I, I gotta say, man, this is a lot of items to go through. And this one, uh, we did come out with just about 11.5 mil. Also, don't forget, we do have seven Larens keys that I did not actually open during this video. Maybe I'll save those for a future Larens key video. We will see. But last and final price check, this is all of the Ether, all of the Revenant bracelets, as well as most of the other PVMing drops. And all of it does come out to be... 72.9 mil. So we go ahead and we add 72.9 mil to the 202.7 mil that we've already added up and the overall loot from 1,000 players comes out to be 275.6 mil absolutely exceeded my expectations uh that is on average like 275k per person um we died about 183 times according to the kdr and we did get smited for a lot of plus ones which you guys will see in the upcoming blooper and death video overall though we didn't really make too much money if i had to guess i would say we lost anywhere from 40 to 60 mil uh certainly not cheap to pk these days all the food the potions the runes as well as the gear and the cost of losing plus ones really did add up. But in all honesty, this video had nothing to do with making a profit. This was all about making memories and uh, really doing what I enjoy most in this game. And that's always been since day one, PKing. So in honor of that and in honor of anyone who's ever spent time in the wilderness, I thank you for helping keep it alive and helping keep this game alive. Thank you very much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And until next time, Mr. No Sleep, out.